graduation. Ready. Let's call this meeting to order if we could, please. Ready. First order of business would be the minutes. Minutes from the May 21 meeting. One minor correction I emailed to Ned on, on a correction on page uh, 675. Just a typo at the bottom of the page under budget amendment where it says Nelson County Treasurer Rhonda Fenwick it should have R at the end of the. I don't know why I'm particular about spelling, but to even up. Everybody follow me on that one? Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any corrections or changes? Otherwise, entertain a motion to, to approve. So, okay. Motion by Eric. Second, Pete. You? Yeah, I'll second. Second. Okay. For discussion, I'll approve. Say aye. 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 Disapprove. Motion carried. Okay, next will be bills and transfers and additional bills. Was the generator replaced or just repaired? I don't know. It was a, it was a repair. Uh, there was a uh, leak in the fuel pump and a relay for the fuel uh, start system. So it was just, fuel pump had to be taken off, rebuilt, and reassembled. Any other questions? Um, the brick pillar project. Is that, is that a draw on that? That's a draw, that's on the final page. That's not the base. Basically, they got all the brick up, but they need to put the cats on top. Gotcha. gotcha. Are y'all going to help put them up? We'll worry about it go down before we probably just help with someone. Turn that well. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. It looks good. Matches, all the brick looks, you know, there wasn't more of one color on one than the other. I thought they really looked good. Yeah, they did look good. It's, yeah. it's a whole lot nicer than something else to pay for. Yeah, it helped. <laughs> Is that the go ahead? Is that the final payment on the boxes that you ordered? Yes, right here. Yes. So we're done. Make a motion to make the transfers. Motion has been made by Bernard Ice. It's her second. Gary Coulter. For the discussion. All approved. Say aye. Aye. Disapproved. Motion will carry. Okay. Uh, Next order of business would be the Soil Conservation District budget. Tom, I passed out a copy for everyone to review. Media, give you a copy of it. We do not approve this. We, we, they submit it to us a matter of public record. Right. I'm just here to present it, and if y'all have any questions, I will try to answer them. But for the most part, we offer technical any landowner in Nelson County, be it city, county, whatever, and we administer the CAPE program for the Department of Agriculture, the tobacco money that comes back, that's predominantly what it is. We have a millage tax of 0 .052 or something, it's very minimal, but we collect around 100000 or a little more every year, and we administer it, that's what we do. Any about questions? a half a penny, basically what it is. Yeah. It's half a penny. So it generates about $130,000 in, in property tax. Questions? Um, can, can, uh, do you have a major project each year that you work no, on? Sir. Yeah, just no, sir. Uh, individual property owners? Yes. Yeah. Now, Robbie, uh, they come down to you, they can get the soil tested from time to time. Yeah. You guys do that. Okay. We, yeah, quite a bit of that. Quite a bit of that. We also submitted a plan of work that lists everything that we do, the equipment that we rent and that we own for all of it's in order to conserve floor soil. We do soil. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Uh, did we get that? I, I did not get that this summer. It was submitted. <laughs> was it submitted? <laughs> Just like the budget, but well the budget you submitted the budget here to me. But I did not get that from Gail. Well, I, if I did, I, I don't remember getting it. You yet. just don't remember getting it. She's, <laughs> we go I'll, I'll make copies of that now, Jim. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, but well, it doesn't change a lot from year to year. Okay. Thank you, Tom. You can get a copy of that for them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 1920 tourism budget. You guys received a copy of that. Mike's here to. Uh, and answer any questions you may have. I made a copy of last year's budget so you could do a comparison, Mike. Sure, thank you all for allowing me to be here. What I'll do is we'll kind of walk through and hit the highlights and then answer any questions you want. 
Just as a reminder, the Tourism Commission is a joint city county commission. We're funded with two primary sources of revenue, 1% restaurant tax on all restaurants in Bardstown city limits, and a 3% transient room tax on all rooms in the county. That includes hotels, bed and breakfast, and Airbnbs, and we track the Airbnbs and, and collect from them. Uh, as you'll see this year, um, if you've got last year's especially, we are uh, recommending or budgeting a 3% increase on the restaurant tax. Uh, our restaurant tax has grown pretty steadily over those years. Okay, my time's up. Thank you. It's not church. So uh, you'll see that's going from 628000 to 661000 this year. And again, how we project this is we actually base that off of what our actuals will be. And, uh, we've done pretty well in the restaurant tax this year. We'll be ahead of budget. So that 661 is based off what we're, we're looking at those actuals. One of the changes that you'll see here, though, or it's actually not a change, it's the same amount of money. Room tax. We're coming in under this year on our transit room tax. There's been a couple of issues. One, a couple of our properties were shut down for some renovations, so they lost some of that revenue. We didn't want to be overly aggressive in the budget. Uh, we know we have the two properties being built out off 245, the Holiday Inn Express, and the Fairfield. Unfortunately, with construction, you don't know when they're going to be open, uh, when they'll start actually generating revenue. So we felt it uh, best to keep that number the same as we were last year. We're going to come in, we're thinking probably ten to $12,000 under this year on the room tax. So instead of it increasing, as I said, they may be open in September, but with weather, they may not open until January. So we're not in putting any of their revenue in this budget this year. We'll, we'll kind of look at it. Smart and, budgeting. Yeah, we'll look at that as almost you know added value or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, you'll notice a line in there for BCCA. That is the Bourbon Capital Community Alliance. Um, I think many of you are familiar with that. Uh, 501c3 that gets most of its funding through uh, the, the distilleries to help work on a variety of projects. This past year, that was all volunteer driven. Uh, I serve on that board as, as do a number of others. Uh, but what we noticed was being a volunteer driven, a lot of the initiatives that they had come up with weren't moving forward. So there was some discussion among BCC about hiring a full-time executive director and doing some other things like that. We went to them and said, we will retask some of the time with one of our staff members to be the lead on the BCCA. So all the National Bourbon Day activities that, you, that uh, you've seen with the banners going up and everything that's gonna be happening next weekend, uh, Sam Lacey in our office is driving that. Sam is still our social media director. He's still working on that. This $10,000 is an operating agreement that they are paying us to kind of offset some of Sam's time so that if we need to supplement some of the social media stuff, we can do that. In addition, we had paid our $5,000 into that over the past few years. We've eliminated that, so we've saved a net of $15,000 uh, to the good for us. I guess I won't. we're saving our five and then getting 10 back from them. Another uh, major change that we made is uh, there was a, a line in the revenue called marketing reinvestment. <clears throat> when I came in last year, I kind of struggled with that line from a budgeting standpoint. What that basically is or was, at any given time throughout the year, our cash flow goes up and down, obviously. Um, in the slower months over, the, over Christmas, our cash flow is lower. In the busier tourism times, our cash flow is higher. This was basically money that was already in the bank where they wanted, uh, the, the, the commission wanted to be able to, to spend on marketing. So it really wasn't new revenue, it was almost like we were double counting revenue. And it, it was always this time of year when I was like, well, how, it's not revenue, but we were able to spend it. It was almost like a savings. From a budgeting standpoint, I was never comfortable with that. So we've taken that $50,000 out, okay? So, so again, it's not a loss of revenue to us. It's money that was in the bank and you all have the same look on your face that I've had, look, trying to trying to figure this one out. So that shows a $50,000 reduction, but it's not a loss of revenue, if that makes sense. It's money that we've had in the bank that in previous years they wanted to be able to spend and have access to spend, so they included it in the budget, almost like a savings. So we, we've removed that. The Any questions on that before I move forward? No. Okay. Uh, when we get into the expenses, um, I, I'm sorry, the other major commitment, if you look under fixed expenses, you'll see commitment SFS, that's the Stephen Foster um, commitment that we've made, $250,000 over five years. This represents our third installment. The first two we were able to pay out of savings. 
uh, that that savings is no longer there. You know, we cashed in a CD to pay that. We we've still got money in savings, but didn't feel comfortable doing that. So we've put that into our operating budget this year. So net of all this, um, we also had an increase, I should say, in employee benefits from the pensions going up. So that that's a that was a pretty significant increase for us. Uh, to back, make this balance, though, when you lose the fifty thousand in reinvestment and plus the fifty thousand, uh, or pardon, plus our revenues not going up as highly, uh, this budget represents a seventy-two hundred dollar net decline from last year. So last year's budget net was nine sixty-three five hundred. This year's nine fifty-six three hundred. So um, there's one other thing I wanted to add. Excuse me. Oh, uh, one thing we did con continue, as you know, for many years, tourism has given uh, community projects and grants out. We usually do 10% of the restaurant tax. We've kept that, so you see that increase from 62 to 66,000. Just as an FYI, we've got about $90,000 in requests already in for that money, um, which is great. We, we, we love to support that. The biggest hit we'll take in this to make the, the, the uh, budget balance, however, is in our marketing and advertising. That is our really our most flexible area, as you know. Um, it's the one that, that is the hardest to take as a destination marketing organization. Uh, you know, we've gotten a lot of publicity over our ad campaign that's out there about bourbon comes from Bardstown. Uh, it costs money to do that, but it works. That's what drives folks here. So if you look at that, uh, last year we spent 315,000, had budgeted 315,000 for marketing and advertising. This year it's 265. So hopefully, as we may have savings throughout the year on other projects, we can funnel more money into that area but still come in on a balanced budget. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. I have any questions on that? This is a an item that we have to approve. Mike, I have a question. Um, you said the, uh, three, well, the, the percentage tax for the city of Bardstown only restaurants. So in other words, some people were under the impression that all restaurants in the county pay that tax? Is that a, a no, city the restaurant tax? Is, is that by city ordinance? Yes, restaurant county? tax is city only. City only. Uh, by statute, the rest, uh, um, it's cities of fourth and fifth class can implement, impose a restaurant tax. So, do the county, do, do county residents tax at any point? I guess transit room order? tax. Transit, transit room tax. Any any hotel property, Airbnb, bed and breakfast in the county will be paying that transit tax of three percent. And and uh, you mentioned a three percent increase in in revenue on the on the uh, restaurant restaurant tax. tax. I mean, that's a three percent increase in revenue, not three percent. I just want to make sure. Right. Yeah. Right. Three, yeah. I'm sorry. Three percent increase in revenue. I, I yeah. knew what you meant. By, by statute, the, by statute, the maximum a community can put on to the transit tax is three percent, unless you have a convention center and you can add another one percent. The maximum you can do on a restaurant tax in a city is three percent, and we are at one percent. I got I got a couple questions. Mm -hmm. uh, does do you guys invest in the in the incorporated other incorporated cities besides the city of Barstown to draw tourism and stuff in those areas as well? Yeah, we, we promote the entire county. Right. Yeah. So like our state fair booth will represent everybody. Uh, we promote them. Most of our assets for tourism are here. Yeah. And what and, and a lot of folks will well, not a lot. Some folks say, well, we're more than bourbon. Well, absolutely we're more than bourbon. What I can tell you is when people come in downstairs mm -hmm. I'm, this is 85% of the folks who come into our visitor center downstairs uh -huh. are here for some distillery tour or something bourbon related. And then they say, I've got another two hours, what can I do? That's when we direct them to other locations, which direction they're going, et cetera. Okay. So yeah, a lot, a lot of what we do for the other areas too is what's in earned media public relations. Right. Uh, when folks come in, we travel writers, we direct them out there and try to get coverage for that. To me, that's more valuable than a paid ad anyway, because it's a third party endorsement, just like you know the, the railway museum mm -hmm. uh, down in New Haven mm -hmm. and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's where we try to pitch those story ideas. Motor coach operators and shows that we go to, those are the great big buses that park down here and everybody gets mad when you gotta drive around them. <laughs> Please don't be mean to those folks, <laughs> um, which you're not, I'm teasing. But um, you know, we go after the motor coach market specifically for a lot of these other uh, attractions that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can tell you, we do a couple of those shows a year, uh, and when you know when they roll into town, they're bringing anywhere from 25 to 40 people at a time. Um, they're they're not necessarily looking for distilleries. To be right. honest with you, you right. know that's an older demographic. They're looking for things like the Civil War Museum or the Oscar Getz Museum, Rail Museum, the Dinner Train Mile, Kentucky Home. Uh, that's what piques their interest, and we would love to get them to spend the night 
because their spend locally will double mm -hmm. on average when they spend the night. And we have a lot of interest with people wanting to stay here. Our problem right now is inventory. Hopefully the new property is coming on through inventory. And when they, when they need 40 rooms on a Thursday night, sometimes that's hard to find mm -hmm. here. So hopefully the two new properties coming in will, will give us some more options there. But that's really where we market. Those, those attractions. This quite not quite budget related, but what about the, the Bourbon Festival this year? What's your also is it is it a go or I haven't? Yes, it's a go. And, and if you haven't heard, um, <coughs> I, I can tell you this very quickly. I am actually serving as the interim director of the I Bourbon saw Festival. That. Yeah, so uh, and yes, if anybody's questioning, we are having a Bourbon Festival. We're gonna, we're uh, tickets are going to be going on sale hopefully this week. We're finalizing a couple things, making a couple of changes. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are we are moving forward. I am interim. I'm not doing this full time. I have another full time job downstairs, uh, and, and there have been a couple. As a matter of fact, I had scheduled a meeting for nine o'clock today. Forgetting I was coming in for yeah. the bourbon festival. Forgetting I had to come do this. So I'm still balancing some of that. Right. But yes, okay. festival we're uh, full full steam ahead. So you started advertising for that festival. The Tickets will go on sale. No advertisement has that any for position gone out for no for the dates like all over the state or country? not yet not yet. Um, most well, the, the dates were set last year, the 18th yeah, through the 22nd. Right. So they're online, um, and we're we're making a couple of tweaks to events, some ticket changes, prices, uh, pricing changes, I should say, uh, moving a couple of events at the request of the sponsors to different days, and then once we find, I don't want to put anything out online for sale, and we're going back and have to change if we've sold tickets because people make plans. Mm -hmm. One of the questions that came up when when uh, everything occurred at the Bourbon Festival. Very candidly, one of the one of the conversations the board has had was, "Do we cancel this year?" And I immediately said no, because most of our hotels, most of our bed and breakfast, most of our properties are already sold out, mm -hmm. and and you just you can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, with competition in global this year with Bourbon mm -hmm. Beyond, mm -hmm. and, and I'm hearing rumors of some more competition coming next year at that same week. Mm -hmm. uh, if you cancel it, it goes away and it's done. And mm -hmm. it's such it's it's so impactful to us. It really is here. Um, and from a tourism standpoint, uh, obviously, and, and everything else, but but the board looked to tourism because it started in tourism 28 years ago, and said, "Could you fill in this year?" And we did, and, and that's what we're doing. Luckily, um, two of the staff members are still on board over at, at Bourbon Festival. We, we uh, uh, were able to, to keep them, uh, and we're moving along. Like I said, so we're just going to finalize a couple things, and, and as I said, hopefully tickets go on sale this week. We'll get a lot of calls. We're late on doing that, mm -hmm. but I'd rather. Get it right and said have to come back and, and change some things. I want to thank you on behalf of the community. Absolutely. 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 Oh, uh, yeah. you don't have to thank me. That's, uh, yeah, that's, no, that's if we didn't have it, these numbers wouldn't look so good last year, <laughs> and y'all wouldn't be thanking me. <laughs> <laughs> so, any other questions? Well, please? do you have an average cost or some kind of idea what a tourist spends here in Barton? You know, we usually get that through a visitor profile, a, a, a right, specific right. research. One has not been done here since 2012. Um, I can kind of I can get research uh, from friends in the region who have it, and, and that, that research is very expensive. That, that's part of the reason. I, I don't want that to come off as, as my being critical. To do a visitor profile for Bardstown, you're going to look in the neighborhood of thirty to fifty thousand uh, dollars really? for somebody to do that. Yeah, because a lot of times what it is, it, it's intercept surveys where they're bringing staff in and actually going out to your attractions and. And as you're walking in, people will stop you and ask, you know, those. We try to capture some of that data downstairs, but what you have to understand about our visitor center downstairs, you know, last year with all the construction going on with the with the uh, scaffolding and everything, that 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 cut our numbers down. We still had about 6,500 people coming here last year, um, specifically for tourism. You know, we're kind of the, the the welcome desk for planning and zoning and fiscal court and judge's office as well. We don't count those in that that group and those numbers. And again, um, 80 to 85 percent of those are asking about, birth. and then we, we track whatever else they're asking for. It's a long answer to your question. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a specific dollar amount simply because it is right. It's just expensive to me. I mean, you've got something in the back of your mind probably because you have to way for Jake. Yeah, that's I, fine. I understand you don't have. To yeah, and, and we'll, I'll go back to the motor coach. I can I can get you data out of the National American Bus Association on what their spend is. Usually if a motor coach stops in your community, when you see a bus parked on either side of this building or, mm -hmm. or downtown, when those people filter out in your community, the average spend for that entire bus is about $4,500 mm -hmm. in the community from shopping, food, whatever else. 
again, if you spend the night, you can pretty much double it, and maybe even a little more. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why they're so important to, to get here. They will spend money. And uh, that's what we're about. And tourism, best description I've heard of tourism was pick your pocket and make you smile about it. You know, we want, we want visitors to come in, spend money in our shops, spend money in our restaurants, and frankly leave so that we don't have to bring on more sheriff's deputies and have to deal with the school system with more and more people coming in. So uh, it's a balance. But, I, you know, I would love to have that data, and we're looking at ways to, to do that. Um, the state oh, economic, the state's got a little sample of it. The state's got a little sample, and the state's numbers are late this year because they're changing the company that they're working with. And that, that can give you kind of a broad cross section. It, you know, just it's hard to extrapolate when they're including Louisville and that and some of the other metro areas with higher average daily rates in their hotels and everything else. Thank you. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, I need a uh, motion to approve the budget, uh, tourism budget. I'll make a motion. For motion by Harry. Is there a second? Yes, that's second by Keith Metcalf. Any further discussion? All approved, say aye. Aye. Uh, this approved. The motion will carry. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good presentation. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to uh, on the appointments. Uh, I'm going to pass that to the next court meeting. Um, the next order of business would be the hospital industrial revenue bonds. Uh, about uh, a few months ago, you guys approved a industrial revenue bond, a resolution related to the hospital, and and. They sent a, a, a revised uh, ask back to us for 330 million. I think the other one was like 100. And can't remember the exact number. But what it is, you go to you go to the back page. They're including uh, this uh, it's set for several facilities. The one in uh, uh, the um, Common Spirit uh, Health, which is part of the Colorado nonprofit CHI, Dignity Health. Uh, Kentucky One Health and St. Joe Health Systems. Uh, so it really, you're not approving all that money just for graduate, it's for their whole group. And we're part of that group. Everybody understand on that? Industrial revenue bonds are issued to create cash to either refinance or do new property. <coughs> I would need a motion to approve that. Make the motion. Motion by Bernard Ice. I uh, approve the resolution as presented. Is there a second? And I'll get questions after we get a second. Get a second. I'll second. Second? Discussion. How come we can approve for the hospital in Colorado? That's their corporate office. That's their corporate. And one in California, too. It's, it's, it's like a corporation. Like you're approving, say, if you, we approve Heaven Hills or Jim Bean's uh, bond issue, we've done those in the past. They've got places in oh. different parts, parts of the country. Okay. It's just a, your, 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 um, uh, issuing them the ability to finance or refinance a project or a, um, a specific project in, in not just in your area but other areas as well. Mm -hmm. But the monies that they sell those bonds are tax-free to the investors. These are actually tax-free municipals. Just like a municipal. They're under a different classification but they are tax-free. Hmm. Any other questions? All approved say aye. Uh, Disapprove? Motion carry. We've done these probably since last year built out here. Uh, probably the third or fourth time. Uh, next would be good news. Health insurance renewal and and uh, dental and short term life and benefit that we carry on the floors. Uh, good news, our anthem policy uh, renewal was uh, it's anticipated a little bit earlier. And uh, we were able to get, because we have a good, decent experience this year, no increase in our premium. How many, how many times has that happened, guys? Bernie, you've been around how long? I don't recall it ever <laughs> uh, So that's zero here. <laughs> zero. It's usually 7 to 15%, seven to percent, usually. Uh, so uh, then on the, on the second page of that, I passed out to you guys, um, the dental uh, will take a 5.82 reduction as well. I asked, by the way, I asked for, uh, I said, if you get down to zero, can't you give us a 5% discount? He said, I knew you was going to ask that. <laughs> but uh, no, no, nothing else on the health, but the dental is going to go down 5.8% 5 5 <coughs> uh, 
and uh, we will go back to the standard dental policy. Uh, you understand the employee pays 50% or half of that as well. Have we asked for quotes from anyone else? Uh, what's that? Quotes, have we asked for quotes okay. from anyone else? On health insurance, it's different than general liability and workman's comp. Health insurance, no matter you, who your broker is, they have to give you the same rates. So I could get an XYZ broker, this is the broker we've dealt with for 25 years. Uh, when you go to health insurance, uh, Anthem's got to give broker A the same quote as broker B. Follow what I'm saying? I don't really. I follow what you're saying, but have you, like KCO? Well, K KCO doesn't, they, they underwrite this. They, 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 KCO is not in the health, insu health insurance business. They supplement Humana, Anthem, they're brokers for these. Now, general liability is different. But they have so many members. If you're in association with KCO, they have so many members, then they get a better rate. Not on health insurance. Uh, it's not what they're telling us at the conference. I understand. They give, away, they give back like five million. <coughs> I understand. Yeah. And if you want to be part of a self-insured group, the court in previous that has chosen to do that. Well, uh, out of the 120 counties, 113? 118. I understand. 118. 118. I understand. But I, we've never, uh, in, in the 25 years, we, one year or two years, we were in the self-insured group. And I've never chosen to do that. Well, I don't and we do not have to get the health insurance out. <coughs> we seek quotes, professional quotes. It's professional services for a broker. And I've always used uh, this group. Would it hurt to get a quote? But it, would, it, would it hurt? Yes. We already got this, so I, we I, know. I, you, know you know what this is. So what will happen is, it will open the door back up to a, a Humana, Assured, a uh, Aetna, and these other folks, and uh, I don't think you'll get a better price. I really don't. But I'll, I mean, if you want me to try it, and remember now, you're going into a self-insured group. Back about 20 years ago, we got assessed $45,000 at the end of the year that we didn't know we were going to, going to get. How long ago? About 20 years. 20. 22 years, probably 23 years. Last time I was with Keiko. The reason I got it, we got out of Keiko and the court has proved it every time is it's a self insured group. And when you're into a self insured group, you are covering the liabilities of other counties. Well, why do you not think it's a good thing if 113 out of 120 counties? Just ask Barstown High School. Uh, what was it? Anybody remember the high school that uh, was it Barstown? One of the high schools, local high schools, got assessed. Because they were in, a, in the Kentucky League of Cities insurance. Mm -hmm. Barstown went to that. They suffered the first year. I don't know how they're doing now. You might want to come. You know, ask to do it. I'm, I'm satisfied with it. But you want me to go go, go to Keiko? Uh, Judge, is that what the city has? The League of Cities. What's that? Uh, Anthem. Insurance. Anthem. Because they're no. It's they, they got a, they got a self insured group it, it, themselves. That health insurance is different than they're talking about all the insurance. Who, us? Uh -huh. No, we're talking about health. Yeah, but it's, a, I mean, if you go to one, you go, you, you're going to well, one. Well, we don't have to. I mean, if we get a quote on it. Okay. And it beats this one by that or that one by this. Okay, I'll be glad to go with that, too. I think you're making a mistake. I just want to be on the record. Well, I don't know. That, well, that's all we're asking. But I was glad to go to KCO and ask them to get a quote on health insurance. But what, what they're going to do, they're going back, back to Anthem, they're going to Humana, and they're going to, Anthem's got to give them the same rate by law. It's what you're getting now. That's what I'm getting now. Health insurance is different than general liability and workman's comp. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just talking health. I'm not talking about liability or comp. Well, that probably all ties together. I mean, you probably. Get, I'll be glad to get a discounted rate. I have no no personal ties to any company. Uh, but an, but a, a broker is a broker to me. Right here. I'll be honest with you. I, I mean, think it is too. I, 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 it, it, it would depend on the coverage and not so much as the rates to me to benefit the employee. I mean, especially if they took a ding on their on their uh, retirement. You know, I, I mean, to me, if it's if this is a better program than KCO or vice versa, you should probably find out. What you got to understand. Th this has KCO is going to quote uh, an insurance company. KCO is not in the health insurance right. business. They're right. just a broker for the health insurance business. And there are about four or five un uh, underwriters, Anthem, Humana, <coughs> Aetna, et cetera. But I'll be glad to hold on this if you're taking a risk. I agree. 
of and and get quotes from other companies comparing apples for apples. Mm -hmm. Is this just for a year? Yeah. So well, are you saying from the broker's fee, is the broker's fee all By law is the same. So no matter where it goes. If you, if so if you were to get it like Humana quote and an Etna quote, if it's the same, why would why would let, let me just quote, say this. If it's the same, why would quote be be you will get out of the four or five major companies, you'll get two of them to the, uh, will say we we uh, decline to quote. It's happened regularly. Well, I mean, I just always think it's health insurance is much different than than general liability and workers' comp. I promise you that because there's only a handful of companies in the health insurance business. Now, uh, general liability and workers' comp, there's but well, quite a few of them. But now, if you want me to go back and good quote, I will. So it's up to the court. So you think, let's go on and go with this for a year and maybe we'll uh, study into it and get some kind of idea? In, in, in January, February, March, mm -hmm. probably March or April, is the time if you really want to go to CACO to get quotes on health insurance. Mm -hmm. Will you consider it? Yeah. Well, I'll make a motion to accept this. Thing. Second. Any further uh, discussion? Yeah, I just want to add that. I know I'm, this is, uh, history has shown that Bert, you remember these guys, you got new guys here. Assessment. We, we've had the assessment, plus we've had, last year, I'll, I'll give you the information on it, two or three of the companies refused to quote us. I remember one oh, year. Yeah. Several years yeah. is done. And, and that's what you got to have, what you got to watch out is switching from Anthem to Humana hurts the employees a lot of times, or Humana to Anthem. You got to watch that. I don't cover everything. And it's got to be because you're in the system. Under your uh, at some doctor's office, don't so take that type of yeah. I mean, just health insurance is different than general liability, and and if you if you want me to get uh, quotes on general liability and where it was coming from, Keiko, I'll, I'll do that this year. I don't know the only thing I'm concerned about, is but you're getting health you're subject to assessment. Is the employees? You know, if you have a spouse, you know, the person come in the sheriff's department, twenty two, three years old, and uh, need family plan insurance. I mean, it is so expensive <coughs> right now. There's we, 600 and some dollars a month. We need to look in later Six, on. 630, and that's one yeah. of the things that I bring up to the court is I had two young guys worried that the insurance was going to go up, but their pay is not. And we're going cost of living, but it doesn't cover what the the insurance was going on in previous that's years and that's happened in the previous yeah, years yeah, yeah. I, i'm glad that's to hear that we're at an even uh, because problem. yeah only and simply because our our experience mod is real good right now we haven't had any super big claims this fiscal year the, the catch dean is that we're my guys are looking at what the city's paying and they're doing the same job and they're getting a better insurance and i don't know what the, the, the deductibles, the deductibles, the deductible. what it is, but they're paying not even half of what we're paying on exactly. monthly, monthly rate. So I guess my question would be if, if everybody does the, the same quote, city is probably about as the same size as the county on numbers. employees on numbers, <coughs> why are they paying Because the city's paying more of it. The city pays city more? The paying more of it, number one. And I'm new to all no, and number two this. and number two, they're in a self-insured group themselves within themselves. They're different than what Cato is. Well, that sounds like to me it's a better deal. It, it can be, but it, it can, can be, be bad too. If you have a lot of money in the city's experience, you you. the first two or three years, if the truth is known when Ed Meese was there, you remember that mm -hmm. name? Mm -hmm. I, I suspect you had a half a million to three quarters of a million dollar loss several years in a row. And I'm telling you, the employees paid for it. I, I don't know the exact know. numbers. So, so it's it, something you really have to think about. It, it you sounds have to really good. Weigh it out. You really do. And and uh, but I think I think some of this is we got to explain to our employees what the difference is. All they're looking is at numbers and saying right. they pay half or what we're paying a monthly, and they don't know the difference between it. It's cheaper than state insurance. I'll say that for the well, you're on the state right now. Yeah. Well, I was on the state. Yeah, I'm on this now. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> it's cheaper for the family plan on the state, about eight hundred something bucks. So, but let me just say, uh, so everybody remembers, the family plan is. I, I'm, I'm going to quote a, a number here. It's not going to be exact. We're paying about twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars a month. I mean, year. 
for a family plan. And I can't remember the exact numbers because there's four different categories. So when the employee's paying 600 a month or $7,200 a year, the county's paying almost 25,000 of that mm -hmm. on top of that. Mm -hmm. What's our deductible? $1,500. 1500 That's $6,600 out of pocket. In today's world, that's a that's pretty good. decent plan. That's pretty yeah. good. It really now, is. Now, city's got a better plan. There's no doubt about it. But I don't know how much more the city's contributing as a governmental entity. And for years, what Raymond's referring to, for years, we were paying our um, sheriff deputies probably three to four dollars an hour more than the city guys were making. But they were making up some of it, about a dollar and a half of it, in the health insurance side of it. So it got, got it a little bit closer. Now the city's hiring uh, all retirees just about out of met local metro where they don't have to pay the pension or the health insurance. But they're, on the same token, they're also gotten a big pay raise compared to our guys. They cover 7.4 miles, square miles of the city of Barstown, and we're covering 424. But, but for 20, 24 years, though, we were 3 to $4 ahead of everybody. I get that, but I guarantee you the sheriff's office does a little bit more work. What the, what the, the, we won't get into that side. Can you guarantee that? <laughs> I guarantee it. I'll I'll put my you can pull it that off. I'll put my paycheck on <laughs> You said a while ago you didn't think Kenko was a good thing because it's self-insured. No, because you could be assessed on on uh, on the general liability and workman's comp. Well, let's just talk about medical. On the medical? Yeah. Medical, no. No, you're just a broker. They're just a broker. Okay, but you said that they're self-insured? And then the city of Barstown is also self -insured? It's a completely different program. Completely different program. The Barstown is uh, self-insured. They've got an underwriter. When they get to a certain point of, of liability, and I'll be glad to have a, a broker come explain it to you guys. Who's our broker? Our broker for health insurance is Mike Tolley with Assured Partners. The county's been with him 25 years or so. 24 years. That Conway was me and Pat were working together for several years. Motion has been made on the floor and second, I believe you've got that right. Okay. Now the reason that the uh, the the premiums have went down is because of the, the lack of claims for the previous year. Uh, you know, one thing that I liked about uh, what the city did when I was working there, they offered a healthy employee initiative program to cut back on the claims. And, and I think we need to talk about that before. Is, is, is there any I talked to the program about uh, in, uh, doing something like that this year where they give you maybe a Fitbit and you, if you do so many miles, you get a they, premium. To yeah, yeah, to, yeah, like you manage about the best one that does. Anthem does not do that. Right. But they've got a third party company that will consider doing that. Uh, they, uh, when we were there, it was, uh, they subsidized like your gym membership, so you only paid half of what your gym membership was. I mean, it was a good program. You had to get a physical once a year. You, uh, not with that, with what they were doing then, but uh, I think now. My wife, I think they require that now. They, they require, had like three different things, like Class A, he was in good shape. He mm -hmm. went to the gym. Class B, he was a smoker. He was overweight. Class C, you didn't do nothing, you know. Right, and, right. And you they, they did your rate compared to that. Right. We can look into that. Yeah, yeah. I, I talked to Mike it's about that. The reason I talked to him about my daughter's when she went to work, they provide that. Yeah, it's it's a provide the Fitbit. You mm -hmm. program it into the. You get so many eleven thousand steps a day, it reduces your your premium a few dollars. Gives you a little incentive. State does that also. State yeah. has a food state. State. If, any other questions? All approved, say aye. Uh, disapprove, motion carries. Now, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna stop right here and want to see if you guys want me to go to the general liability and general liability, that's gonna do July 1st. <clears throat> does it hurt to get a quote? I mean, it's just like, well, it does hurt, and it doesn't hurt if I would vote against you, any going to Keiko. But now you guys are five votes. Well, you know. And, and uh, going back to that self-insured group, you know, We've had reductions in general liability and workman's comp over the years, way below what the industry standard was for several years. Now it's gone back up a little bit. And you go see general liability go back up across the board. Generally speaking, what I'm hearing in the industry is uh, our insurance used about 200, 225, Rhonda. But that includes a, a, a five million dollar umbrella that we can carry, so that you can add that's twenty five thousand uh, extra. We normally wouldn't have to pay. Uh, we hadn't paid years past, but I'm just 
you know, we want to be protected. So our general liability is about $200,000 a year, and that's a lot of coverage, guys. That's $16, $18 million worth of buildings, about 150, 200 vehicles, uh, jail. That's the hardest part, is that when you have a jail and a police department, those are the two, two things that private companies uh, don't like to insure real well. Keiko does. Well, when you just do quick math on it, 113 out of 120 counties. I mean, if it was only 55 counties out of 120 counties, I could see a question mark. But when it's 113 out of 120, something must be working right. Something must be wrong with the judge, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud. Do you see I know, I know, I agree with you, man. <laughs> judge, can I, can I ask the court to get us what the difference is so we can explain, at least for my employees, what the difference is, because the biggest thing is they're comparing us to the city. And I would like to say, hey, look, I went up there, I fought for you guys, and, but this is the difference. Uh, the difference the, is why the, the, the insurance. The, why why the they're paying in, in the city versus the county. You're talking about health insurance. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, that is the, the biggest thing. There's a 330 some dollar difference. And I think if I can explain to them, look, the city pays more, this is why they pay less than, you know. Before, I did a comparison like that before Raymond, but but that was before the city got to do increases in pay. Right. And and uh, the, the difference was that uh, it was about a dollar and a half, dollar seventy-five an hour. When, when we were four, we were three and four dollars higher, is what I'm saying is, but they weren't getting the cash money, they were getting the health insurance benefit. Now they're getting both. Right. And that's going to be hard to compete with the city. You got to do some work now. I understand. And we're working on it. You understand you, what he's saying? Yeah, yeah. Could you get that guy to maybe have a thing for Raymond to help explain it to his guys? Well, what we got saying? black and white. It's a black and white, the numbers. I always well, like hearing numbers. I don't want to be able to explain to my guys why the cities are so much cheaper than ours. If, if it's not saying, cheaper, it, it's the city's paying more. Okay. Or they were. Now, I, I, the last year and a half, I can't tell you because they bumped up everybody quite a bit. Of it. Yeah, I think their police and their uh, regular employees are, are two different. Uh, uh, you better believe it. They, they, they're paying, the employees paying more than what the police is. Yeah. And they, they did do that to keep police there. And, and, and the uh, police now, under the city's grade scales, they, they can bring in a retired Louisville Metro in at uh, what a 20 year veteran they bring them in at 10 or 15 years worth of seniority right off day one mm -hmm. and so that bumps his salaries up dramatically i mean i saw the scale of scales they're at 25 bucks an hour with 10 15 years worth of experience right Raymond? yes sir yeah makes a difference it makes a big difference but i will get you some information i'll have mike uh, try to get you some information on the health insurance too do you think maybe you can get him to come to court someday to kind of help us all well, uh yeah that and i asked some people as well but and that way maybe raymond can bring some of his officers that's not on duty that day and but their was like their bottom line is the money i know but their bottom line well i understand that i mean you know the if benefits are dollars more a week are check in 20 bucks but I'll, I'll, I'll have Mike come to the court. Thank you, sir. Auditor's contract. <laughs> yes. Um, you guys remember last year the state had asked uh, the county to um, contract with a private CPA firm to do our audit, and we did. And they asked us again this year to do the same thing. So I went and got a couple of quotes for uh, the upcoming audit for fiscal year 19. I passed out this mm -hmm. paper to you. Uh, the firm that did our audit this past year, Roy Hunter, um, they were the low quote. Uh, Patrick and Associates was the other quote. The numbers are uh, pretty close together, but I would suggest that we stay with um, Roy Hunter CPA since they just did our, did great our audit. They did a great job. They were efficient. They were in and out. out. <laughs> um, and uh, from what I've heard, we'll probably have that audit by the end of this month. That's about a four-month turnaround compared to 13 coming in the state. Well, motion sure. to approve uh, Roy uh, W. Hunter CPA. I'll make that motion because I trust Rhonda's opinion. In W. Chase, man. Second by second by Gary. <laughs> you get that? I'll approve. Say aye. 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 
Disapproved. Motion carried. Thank you, Rhonda, for that work. So, Dean, on the health insurance, did you guys table that vote? No, we voted. Vote to approve it. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
So that's something we would bid. Could it be over your 20,000? Can you just get a quote? We can. can. Yeah, so it's about 75,000. We got a quote for 75,000. Preliminary. Yeah. Yeah. There's only two or three manufacturers, I think. What? Guys, is that right? The We're not here to ask for anything. We're <laughs> fixing it. <laughs> We're here to inform you of what is coming down the road. Right. If we reduce the size of trees we cut down with that thing, it would last much longer. I think you need to get a bigger one. <laughs> Uh, good report, um, please. But basically, uh, we're, we're going to patch it for yeah, a while. Yeah, we're going to patch the boom mower and hopefully it lasts for well, a while. You guys uh, be aware of it. Since the boom mower's been down, uh, we're getting calls on trees and we understand the problem out there. Uh, uh, crews are busy right now trying to catch up on culverts and uh, rocking roads. So basically, on these days that we can kind of transition, we've I'm just sending my guys out there with chainsaws right now attack these trees so we are trying to address the issue that just ask everyone to be patient because it is a whole lot slower than that boom oil. uh and hopefully the boom oil will be back up quickly so what else uh, you got? Uh, no uh bush hogs yeah. <coughs> yeah. Uh, we did re finish replacing all the cross drains on nelsonville loop so uh it's ready to be overlaid and a po has been issued to mago uh, we've uh, repaired ditches and shoulders on Lima Ford Road, uh, Wire Lane, Plum Run, and Spencer Maddenly. Uh, today we're working on replacing a cross drain on Yates Cooney Neck Road. We're getting that one taken care of for you. Good deal. Uh, I also have a crew on Moss Brown repairing that road slide today. Was it bad? It's, it it dropped a couple interest. of feet. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Any razors on that man? <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you for the call. Uh, the Bushhawk crew, they're currently in District 1. Uh, hopefully, they'll be finished there in a couple days and be headed to District 3. <coughs> and uh, thank you. Hopefully, it's black time. Yep. That's it. So, Bert has given me, uh, we reviewed his roads. This is for the 2019 2020. The, the budget is just approved. The budget is just approved. A uh, list of roads he'd like to have paved, and I have reviewed them. Uh, I'll get you on later. Uh, basically got Hard and Leslie, and that road is all the way from the beginning to end. Uh, we got Width Road Creek. Again, that's all the way from Old Boston Road to the very end. And on North Stillwell, we're actually going to start in the rear and work our way all the way back to the railroad tracks. Uh, the front part is in good shape. We don't need to do that. Uh, his total is 176. 789.52. Now the reason he goes over his 120 is because he had carryover money from years previous that'll cover this dollar. He's got about 6,000 left in the bank. Yes. Okay. So with all of you guys, we'll go through the same procedures, going through every district and picking your roads and trying to get your money together. So. How's our per mile road thing going? It started. Started yesterday. Uh, going well. We started in District 1. We're just starting through 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So they started and I just, Who's probably, excuse me. Who's your name? Uh, Mike Powell is one of them. He used to work for the city of Barstown. You know Mike. Mm -hmm. and he was all over the county. He probably knows he knows the and then Eugene Manningly is with him as well. It's a gentleman that he uh, knew. And so we got two of them. Retired from uh, Gas Company. Tell him drive every road. No matter whether it's rock or gravel, no whether it's rock or gravel or chipsy. So we have a good indication of miles of gravel and chips you got compared to whomever and then we'll come back to the court with those everything can i ask another question sure y'all just put up a sign into county maintenance on did you get a call on that moss brown now not moss brown uh cecil ridge cecil ridge that's correct and two or three of them back there said it's not right it's how that was determined is that short. list of roads that we get from lincoln trail that is the official list gives us some footage and so because we didn't know i didn't know where it was at right so we started at the beginning and drove it until that footage ended out and i told them to put a sign there because we didn't know if there's other documentation out there i just need to get it how much further is the key two tenths so that's a thousand feet yeah i think you know I what I, I call it. and we've all gone through this i just need something Here's what we marked we it off of. We officially closed part of that road years ago. Yeah, correct. Some years ago. 
and this, this intersection was closed and and I'd have to go back and look at the old records. Well, that's what they said. They said years ago when all the landowners wanted it closed, they closed it to this guy's property line. I wouldn't need some of them. Okay. That's he's going to call it. I'm sure. Well, it needs to be in officially approved in court record. And yeah. yeah, that's what I did last time. Yeah, they said when they were getting no all that, that, that's what they you know, just, went to yeah. Joe. I don't like to put the public on the ground. Yeah, you know, yeah. I barely remember. When questioned, I'm going to be conservative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so a thousand feet is quite a bit of difference. So. I, and, and I may be wrong. I don't, I, he, they oh, just oh. two city blocks. I was at <laughs> St. Catherine's picnic and then he hit me up. So, so I would just need to this. Okay. Did you guys approve? I'll check. Okay. Anything else? We, we didn't. We, we didn't. Okay, didn't vote on yours. Was, are you sure you guys you want to vote for it? Vote on his. I do want to vote on his. Okay. Uh, we'll vote I'll on make her. a motion. I was hoping you'd go make a motion, Bert. Uh, second. I'll say. Second by Keith Metcalf. Uh, any further discussion? All approve. Say aye. Aye. Disapprove. The motion will carry. So the public knows the way we handle that burn. I think you guys know we'll drive all these roads, make sure all the culverts are good. Same thing we did in your district when we replaced That's all good culverts idea. prior to yeah, doing it. Do it so you may not see it occur until later in the summer because we got to get around to replacing all the culverts. Okay. Good idea. Um, anything else, Lee? Brad, on roads? That's good. Okay. We'll go to uh, EMA, EMS report. I think Joe's out of town. Yeah, uh, yeah the crusade this weekend had a and yeah. an EMA uh, an ammonia spell uh, yes. spill at yeah. uh, NPR, the Marine Company. Was nobody hurt? Or? No, there was no real issue on it. Luckily, with the uh, it was in one of their large 7,000 gallon ammonia tanks. Uh, they did have some safety devices on it their end that didn't quite kick in like they were supposed to. Uh, we were pretty lucky in the sense that the winds weren't greatly strong that day, so the plume was actually able to rise instead of staying at ground level uh so there was no no injuries reported or anything like that a couple of just you know checking some some minor breathing issues out on scene just from some anxiety but nothing uh, to speak ammonia of. is that uh was that used for cleaning yeah they use it there basically to cut some of their distillates that they keep uh the biggest problem with ammonia that you're going to run into if you have ground level leaks is it absorbs oxygen so it depletes oxygen at whatever level it's at. So like I said, luckily we didn't have a lot of wind, Grant the plume, ammonia plume went high. So we weren't didn't have a lot of effects at, at any kind of ground level issue. Thank y'all for your response. Uh, recreation report. Right. Um, we had the autism awareness ball uh, this past Saturday. Uh, everything went smoothly. Uh, soccer has uh, completed their recreation season, so they're still playing some elite soccer games. Um, baseball season's almost over. They will start turn to play next week and head into All-Stars. Uh, usually All-Stars goes until July. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet, but we might be getting a host state for All-Stars. And if we do, then we'll have teams from, you know, other counties coming in and playing at the park. That's a pretty good thing. Yeah. Uh, Taylor's at a conference, I can, understand. Yes, yes, yes. Can I bring up a thing? Did anybody in here see that autistic boy on What's it? Stars. America's got talent. America's got talent. Mm -hmm. Did anybody see that? Wow. I didn't see it. Wow. It was something. It's all over Facebook. The poor little boy's blind also. And he was uh, kind of unable to talk and this and that. And they put him up there and he played that piano and sang. I mean, Holy Ghost bumps are popping up on there. I <laughs> think of that. It was something. You need to get on the internet and watch it. I heard that. No, it's something. Uh, Joe, as I said, Joe, he's at a conference today. Uh, you got a report that yes. was passed out. We have 130 inmates right now. 52 are state, 78 are county. We do have uh, district court. There's 38 of them. Circuit is 40, and we have 110 male and 20 female as of now. See, total population is 130. Yes. Okay. That's down some. Yes, it was 190 some this time last year. Well, that's, that's a big difference. Yeah. 130, you're pretty tight. Much less 190. <laughs> it's a lot better right now. Yeah. Good. Thank you for your efforts down there. Uh, and our old new business, you guys have anything on our old new business? I, I will uh, ask you in our next court meeting to <coughs> revisit the PACE financing. Uh, 
ordinance that I passed out a couple weeks ago. If you need a new copy of it, let me know. Uh, they have asked us to make a decision, yes or no, on that. If you will do that, uh, and you have the questions, let me know. I'll try to get them answered for you. Um, you guys, have anything else? Uh, material bids are tomorrow. So the next court meeting, I'll have you what asphalt's going to cost and all that good stuff. Is it projected to go up? To $73 a ton right now. They have a focus scale, guys. Yeah. Oil goes up, it can go up during the year. Uh, so we'll see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. All the line was overlaid about two weeks ago. We've done a good job. Well, first week. The magistrate that uh, in that district, he's uh, he's out today, but I'll make sure he's he's aware of it as well. Right. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, just for you guys and girls out there who don't know, this is my uh, new assistant uh, on a short-term basis for a couple hours this morning. Uh, this is my niece, uh, Taylor Jane's. She was interested and wanted to know what we did in our meetings and so forth, and uh, so glad to have the youth involved. Maybe one day she'll run for city council or even county judge. You reckon? No. <laughs> she don't like getting up this early. She <laughs> On a summer day. Good first day. Yeah. Yes. yes. Real quick. Um, the uh, Kentucky uh, Sheriff's uh, Boys and Girls Ranch uh, starting making a trip today to uh, take some of the donations that we've gotten. Uh, the FOP uh, again came through real big for them. Uh, donated 700 blankets for the campers this year. In future years, uh, we also got some items from staff and from patrons. Um, big, big thanks to to them for being uh, so generous. And our for the media, our dates for the uh, boys camp is June 23rd to the 28th, and the girls is July 14th through the 19th. And the sheriff's office has eight spots for the boys and eight spots for the girls. Uh, also, this month is a little busy for us. Uh, myself, I will be attending the National Sheriff's Association Conference, which is hosted in Louisville. And there will be you over, lucky there, didn't there'll be over 3,500 sheriffs from across the nation coming uh, to attend that. Wow. So okay. it's a pretty unique that um, I get to attend it, not only being a first time sheriff, but uh, close to home so yeah uh, what we get is that i'll be sure to stay out a little bit of the uh, it is it's, it's it's going to be a hectic week it's july 15th through the 18th and it'll be a busy through the convention center so anything else motion to adjourn motion. my burner dice their second I said, y'all will say it all day. I'm in the room. He keeps <laughs> looking over. Every second by Eric. I don't know what it's about. All approved, say aye. Aye. Disapproved. The motion will carry. Thank you all. I know you like to adjourn. So I'll, I'll